Hello, everybody. Keaton Gologli with you, and today we are joined by Art Warren, who was a part of the 2017 championship team with the Modesto Nuts, and he made his major league debut in 2019. Art, how we doing? Doing pretty good, man. Good as we can. Yeah. Uh, well, let's first start with what's your quarantine routine right now? <laughs> My quarantine routine. All right. Getting pretty good at, at cooking breakfast. I got a I got a little recipe that I actually took from Donnie. Me and Donnie were roommates. Uh, during spring training, and he told me all off season he was making some ground turkey with eggs and spinach. So I've been eating that literally almost every morning, and then I get a cup of coffee. And throughout the day, I'll get a second cup of coffee. That's inspired by uh, Dan Altavia. He's always sending a couple Snapchats of him getting a couple cup couple cups of coffee throughout the day. So that's been that routine in the aspect of of eating. I've been playing a lot of video games with some of the guys, keeping in contact with them. Um, I've been able to work out at a facility, so that's pretty nice. I've been fortunate with that. And just spending time with my fiance and her family and seeing my family back home. So I'm here in Ohio now and doing it as much as I can. What uh, what are the video games you guys are playing? Uh we just play like Call of Duty, Warzone, um, and Fortnite, mainly just to just to keep in contact with each other. I think it's pretty fun, you know, just to talk mess over the internet. Um <laughs> and just keep in contact with those guys. So we enjoy that pretty much. Yeah, you got to keep that trash talk sharp. You don't want that going – Yeah, you don't want that that's rusting it. out during this. That's going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on tune with that. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's get back into spring training. Uh, just I want to go back to the, to the day baseball shut down. What was your perspective of that day? It was pretty uh, chaotic for sure. You know, me and the roommates, we just kind of sat there and, and just couldn't take it in, honestly. Uh, we were shocked that it was happening, and it's hard to digest that. Um, you know, we were pretty optimistic that it was just going to be a four- to six-week thing that we were going to stay in Arizona and just wait it out. Um, as the week went on, more so, honestly, as the days went on, because things were happening so fast, and the CDC kept coming out with more and more information, as the days would go, uh, it came to a point where we all started to just pack up and head home. So uh, it was pretty crazy to think that, you know, we were a few outings in. Um, we were, you know, days away from starting the big league starting and to think that we're coming to an absolute halt was, it was just, like I said, it's hard to digest that um, something we've never experienced before. So, you know, and the thing is, is, you know, all of us had questions, you know, everybody had questions, but nobody had answers. And I think that was the most eerie part of that. So. So where, where is your arm right now in terms of conditioning? Cause you know, you go through the off season program, you're building up for the major league season, you're getting ready to go. And now you're back into kind of an off season routine. So where's your arm in terms of its conditioning right now? Right. So basically they told us to kind of treat when we went home the, the month of March and April as if it was October. So for me, I backed off a little bit. Um, and, but I'm, I'm throwing three times a week at the facility that I'm working out at and just kind of keep my arm in shape that way. I would say, you know, I'm, I'm pretty close to, to being ready to go whenever it's time to go out to Arizona again, if that's where we go. Um, depending, we don't know where we're going to actually be shipped out to. So, um, but I, I'm in good shape. I've been trying to uh, lift as much as I can and just get strong more so. Um, kind of like a, a doubling up on an off-season uh, type workout. So I'm trying to get as big as I can. Uh, and just keep the shoulder moving. So, is there any? I mean, a little bit of a silver lining to just keep the body like fresh and get a little extra time between when you have to to kind of ramp it up once we do get back to baseball. You know, it's it's actually a little bit more difficult in my opinion because you go from being a hundred percent ready to go. I mean, I, I just actually had this conversation the other day. I was I can't believe you know two months ago I was already you know or two months ago I was uh, pitching. You know, and now we're already two months later and I'm, I'm I completely backed off. So it's just there's going to be a fine line for guys of maintaining where they're at in spring training, backing off and ramping back up again. It's, it's such a scary situation for, for all of us pitchers because, um, to be honest with you, most of us have probably never done this before um, and have, have to do it that quickly and then have to ramp up again here whenever – it's time to go again. So it's just, it's kind of a scary thing that we're all facing this challenge. Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't know how it's going to go for most guys. It's a opportunity for guys to possibly get hurt. And that's what sucks about this thing. So hopefully, you know, major league baseball does the right thing and gives us enough time to get back 
into shape um, and looks out for our arms in that case. But uh, there, you know, you said a fine line. Yeah, there is kind of a fine line of, of being ready to go and, and knowing how to handle the situation. Like I said, there's a lot of questions that nobody has answers to. So this is one of them. This is the biggest one. You know, we try to reach out to Woody and, you know, they, they give us the best answer they can. They don't know either. So that's this, this situation so challenging. Yeah. How has the communication been with Woody and, and the rest of the Mariners uh, higher ups in terms of, of what? Yeah, I mean, again, they don't have a lot of answers to these questions. So how has the communication with the Mariners been in this time? It's been pretty good. They, uh, whenever they find out something, they do a really good job of relaying it to us. Um, the strength and conditioning coaches and our mental skills department, they have done a tremendous job of staying in contact with us. Um, they're doing Monday meetings at Monday morning, like Zoom meetings here where they're doing movement prep. And then uh, we have just actually got off the phone two hours ago with the mental skills um, Franco. So me and six other guys are on call like I am now. And we just run through mental skills uh setting every day or every week on Thursdays and then throughout the week we'll kind of shoot some texts just to kind of keep us locked in a little bit and so I would say the communication is the best it can be you know it's I guess I'm going to say this probably a few more times in this interview it's it's hard to we don't know how to handle it but I think for the most part we're all doing the best we can what are some of those mental skills and what are you taking from some of those conversations with David Franco and, and that group that you've really found helpful so far uh, you know, we're talking about some some real situations that are sensitive to people to kind of admit. Um, today, I brought, I'll give you an example. Today, I brought up one of the challenging aspects of um, thinking about getting called up to the big leagues. I'm on call with a couple of our minor leaguers who are probably in a pretty good chance to get called up here in the next year or so. And I was honest with it. And I said, you know, I had thoughts of what do I need to do to get to the big leagues and how do you handle that? So conversations like that, conversations like how you handle failure, um, how do you stay locked in throughout the year when adversity hits, um, some of those uh, topics, that, that's what we're discussing. Well, one of the uh, areas that you did have some success in was that Sandlot game with Trevor Bauer and the crew at the end <laughs> of spring training. Tell me a little bit about that experience. It was pretty cool. Uh, I told Shannon Dreher, I just talked to her uh, last week, through Zoom as well. And I told her, and I pretty much told everybody I talked to about this. It was kind of cool because I felt like I was back in Ohio playing a wiffle ball game. Uh, there are a bunch of Ohio guys, you know, being from Ohio, especially in this area I'm in now, a lot of people know the Reds, a lot of people know the Indians players. And so, you know, guys like Bauer, Derek Dietrich, Clevenger, uh, Logan Allen's one of their uh, prospects, Oscar Mercado, you know, those those guys that played for the Reds was there. So it's kind of cool. You know, everybody knows those names. Obviously, I know them being from Ohio as well. It kind of felt like I was just playing a backyard baseball game somewhere in Ohio with a bunch of Ohio kids. It was cool. Uh, the idea of them uh, filming it was pretty interesting. Uh, I didn't know how it would go. But, you know, you, you honestly, you hardly even notice the camera crews. Um, even though everybody kind of had their phones out, you didn't really think about it. It was just it was a pretty cool experience that Trevor Bauer put on. and It was a pretty good outcome, too. Well, let's uh, let's get back into your timeline. And, you know, for, for you and I, we saw each other in September 2017 when you're getting that last out of the championship. Next time we saw each other was 2019 in September behind home plate at batting practice at T-Mobile Ballpark after you'd been called up. A lot happened between that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's pick up after the, the championship run. You end up going to uh, the Arizona Fall League, throwing well there. But uh, kind of walk us through some of that timeline in 2018. Well, uh, it started off great in, uh, in terms of me going to my first big league camp. You know, that was pretty exciting. Uh, I remember actually getting a call from Jerry, uh, inviting me to big league camp. And I actually asked him if he could call me back so I could have my mom listen to it. Um, so that was pretty cool. So um, he was there, or my mom was there listening when I got invited to big league camp. So like I said, it was off to a really good start. And uh, felt like I threw the ball pretty well in camp and then went to double A. And then my shoulder kind of blew up with inflammation. So I battled that for basically the entire year of 2018. I had a stint where I came back to Arkansas from Arizona. I rehab for about six weeks and then um, got hurt again in, I think, early July. And then that eventually knocked me out for the rest of the year. So 2018 was kind of a wash from the shoulder inflammation. We couldn't figure out what's going on with it. And uh, then we were able to kind of to get a grip on it finally last year. 
in May. But uh, yeah, 2018 was was challenging for sure. And then jumped into 2019. Uh, didn't go to big league camp. And uh, then went to double A, pitched for the first month. Had the shoulder inflammation come up again. Finally was able to figure it out. And then uh, finished the rest of the year strong. And then got called up in September. Uh, before we get to that, which is a tremendous story, but uh, how were you trying to figure that out? I mean, was it just kind of a nagging problem? Did you have to change something in order to get that shoulder back in shape? Yeah, I mean, we we took a look at mechanics, maybe some biomechanics that were putting stress on my arm. But uh, for the most part, I had to, we we did everything. We did MRIs. MRIs showed my shoulder was clean. Um, two MRIs, actually, one MRI in like May, and then another MRI in August in the. August MRI looked better than the one in May. So we knew structurally everything's good. Um, and we tried a PRP shot, and that didn't work in 2018. Tried a cortisone shot, that didn't work in 2018. And so then I eventually uh, went out and tried to figure it out. And uh, we were able to use this machine that I spoke to the Mariners about, and they are aware that I was using it. And it helped me. It helped my shoulder. It's called a newbie new fit system. And basically what it is, is a stem machine on steroids, retrains the muscles to work and it took away the inflammation in my shoulder. So I was able to get back strong and, and come back healthy and knock on wood. I've been feeling really good since. So that was, um, I was a blessing. What was the emotion of that? Like, I mean, you'd gone through a Tommy John surgery in your college days, a late round pick uh, out of a, out of a D2 school. I mean, you've gotten through all this to get to that point, And now you're battling this thing that's just recurring. So what were some of the emotions that you were going through while you were trying to figure this out and you were having setbacks, but then you were getting some gains and a setback again. Right. It's definitely a roller coaster for sure. Uh, my journey has been pretty interesting. It hasn't been easy. Uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, going back to, to the Tommy John surgery to, you know, a mid round pick, um, the shoulder inflammation couldn't shake it, couldn't figure out what it was going, what was going on. Yeah. That, those are all challenging, um, to over what the motions, uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, depressing, you know, it's, it's hard to have your trainer, you know, John Walker's our trainer, really good guy, great trainer. It's hard for him to sit here and say, you know, man, like we're trying everything. We just, I don't know, you know, we don't know what's going on. And it's it's hard to say, like, you know, the MRIs are clean, but we just don't know how to get the inflammation out. And it's like, it's frustrating. That's just inflammation, you know, it's a fluid. You know, you think maybe running a little bit more or um, doing therapy, physical therapy stuff would get it out, but it just wouldn't shake it. Uh, so that was probably the most frustrating part is knowing I'm healthy, like I'm structurally intact, but I just can't get rid of this nagging issue so that was that was hard to swallow um so the relief when I finally was able to put it past me was like man I wish I would have figured this out earlier but uh there's always a plan to everything so it, it worked out and and I would say to back all that up is the way I got called up and uh the guys who I got called up with it it all comes together you know it's a perfect story so like I said it's it was all a special blessing at the time I didn't didn't see it that way but and it's usually how those those work. All right, well, let's get into it. 2019, you guys get eliminated by Tulsa with that loaded team. And then the, the quadruple call-up, which Pete Woodworth got to be a part of, a couple of other Nuts alums as well. Uh, walk me through from that final out of that game when you guys got eliminated to the moment you're walking out of the shower and you hear your name called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was special. Uh, to see, so Donnie and I, had drove back from spring training to Arkansas at the beginning of the year. And we stayed at Donnie's house and then drove up to Arkansas the next day for opening night. So it was pretty cool to start the year with Donnie and to end the year with Donnie. Um, so that was pretty special. A little tidbit not a lot of people know about. But, uh, but yeah, um, it sucked getting eliminated by Tulsa. We got eliminated in 2018 by him too, and, and we all kind of joked around that, that you know, we're going to – make amends and, and beat them in 2019, especially because we played really well against them in the first half of the 2019 season. And so we felt like we had a really good chance. We matched up well, um, just lost a series. And, and this sucks because, like you said, the loaded group, we had a lot of talent on that team. Um, and it would have been pretty cool to look back one day and, and say, you know, that double-A 2019 championship team 
how many big leaguers got, you know, how many big leaguers came from that team. Um, we're still going to be able to say that, but it's just nice to have a ring to it and win a championship like 2017. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was pretty special to be the last guy to get called. Um, like I said, man, everything about m my personal call up story is very fitting. I got to see three other guys get called up before me. And that's just kind of like a testimony of who I am. I would rather, you know, good happen to somebody else other than me. So I, w I would feel very fortunate. And, like, I appreciate that I got to see that. Starting off with Donnie, to see Donnie get called up and then uh, go up and tell – to hear about him going up and telling his dad, you know, we're going to the big leagues. Not I'm going to – it's we're going to the big leagues. Uh, gives me goosebumps. And to have the chance to meet Rob, Donnie's dad, and, and understand – you know, his backstory and all that, it's its really, really uh, chilling and awesome at the same time. Uh, and then to see uh, Caleb get called up, having played with Kyle since 2017 as well as Donnie, and then to see Justin get called up, you know, it's our first year playing together, but we got to know Justin really well, and he's a great teammate, and I am super excited that he got to, to share that moment with, the, with us as well. Um, and then for me to be the final one to go up with a lot of the guys that I play with, from 2016 all the way up until this point was probably the most special part for me. You know, it was, it was, uh, it's so hard to, to like, to explain the emotions and the uh, excitement around the room just in words. You know, it's hard. It's like one of those things where the cliche is you got to be there. Um, but it was, it was awesome. You know, one of, one of the topics we've heard talked about a lot over the last couple of years, especially since the Mariners came into Modesto in 2017, was how they were trying to keep subgroups of guys together. You know, there were a couple of guys that could have gotten called up out of that 17 team that didn't because, uh, you know, we were making that run. Same thing for 2019. Some guys did get called up from Modesto because you guys were making a run in Arkansas and Modesto was kind of on the cusp there. So, you know, when you look at having a group and a core group of guys, including the coaching staff that have been able to move up together and now are on the cusp of the big leagues and that sort of thing. How much developmental value is there to keep core groups of players together in the minor leagues? I think it's huge. Um, we kind of noticed that's when they, they were blunt with us. The Mariners have been pretty blunt overall um, since that new ownership came with Jerry and Andy McKay and, you know, all the guys that came in in 2016. I was drafted by Zoranzik in 2015 in that group. But ever since they came in, they've been pretty blunt. And so they were very blunt in 2017 saying, hey, you know, we want to win a championship here. We see it being very meaningful for our future as Mariners. Um, I think it's great because the Kansas City Royals did it in their minor league system. You know, the Eric Hosmer, Mike Moustakis, uh, I want to say Alex Gordon yep. and uh, Salvi Perez and maybe one or two other guys. Those, that was the core group. Um, the Mariners, there is a core group, and it's pretty obvious to see who that core group is moving up. Uh, it's worked in the past with the Royals, and we know that. We've talked about it as players. We've talked about, you know, that'd be really cool to go up to the, um, through the minor leagues and go up to the big leagues and win together. And so far, we're on, we're on path to do the same thing. And I think that's really special to look back at. And, and the Mariners obviously have a really good feeling about our group. And they see that potential in our group. And it's inspiring for us to be the guys that, you know, they're throwing all their cards in for. And, and that excites us and makes us want to play a little bit harder. So it's a, it's a privilege to be that group, to be um, thought of that highly by the organization. You know, so we're all certainly excited about that. And like I said, I think, you know, they're doing a good job of, of piecing the right guys together. Um, the chemistry, like you said, of keeping a team together, the chemistry that has been built, from the 2000, actually really from the 2016 Clinton group, right. there's a handful of guys that, that have moved up into the 2017 locker room of the Modesto Nuts, and we kind of carried that chemistry into 2018 and 2019, and, and we can look to continue to do it as we stay together. But I think there's a special chemistry in that group. I remember uh, Pete Woodworth coming uh, to us in 2018 in the locker room asking, hey, what was the recipe for success in 2018? And we told him, you know, exactly what it was. It was the chemistry we had in the locker room. You know, uh, the Lancaster Jethawks had a numerous amount of big leaguers that are in the big leagues right now. Mm -hmm. um, Sam Hilliard, uh, just among those guys. And 
for us to match up with them, you know, they, I'm not, I don't know if they are more talented than us, but the chemistry can go a long way, especially over the course of a season too. Um, those, that's what's going to help you win ball games when not everybody's showing up to the yard that day. And so there's a lot of value in that that gets overlooked. And I think that the plan that they have right now intact is a really special plan. I think it's going to uh, pay dividends here in the future. So we're excited about that as an organization. Yeah, I know, you know, one part of that 2016 team was that you guys got all the way to the title, the, the championship round and lost, and you guys were able to carry that over into a title in 2017. But uh, let's pick things back up for you in September of 2019. You get the call up, you're going up there with some of your teammates, including Pete Woodworth as well. And uh, you pitched great. I mean, six games, no runs, two hits, five and a third innings. Take me back to that first time you get on the field when you get called in out of the bullpen. Well, I'll take it back a little bit further. When I, when I got called up, the first call I made and this call I've dreamt about um, was calling my mom and telling my mom I'm going to the big leagues. That was, that was uh, awesome. I, I started getting uh, teary eyed and emotional and I cried on the phone when I told her. And then I called, my brother was on the phone then too. And then I called my fiance and then I started calling my family and friends after that. So all those calls were calls that I've thought about how would that call go? when it's time for me to tell my family and friends that I'm going to the big league. So to live that out and to experience that, it was uh, pretty special. So, you know, I remember right now, I can see it right now, me, Donnie, Kalu, and, and Dunn all standing out in the, in the like bleacher section in Tulsa, calling all our friends and family and telling them we're all going to the big leagues and just looking at each other like, well, what is going on? So that was pretty special. Uh, you asked what my feelings were or what was going through my head or the experience like when I first ran out of the field. Um, I got a little emotional running out onto the field. When uh, So my family had come out to uh, Seattle. They flew out. We were playing the Reds, so it was pretty special playing an Ohio team to make my debut against an Ohio team. Um, like I said, the big picture here is crazy. Um, lined up perfectly. But uh, – my family was out there for three days and they were only going to stay for two nights and I didn't get in the first two games. And they were, we all met in the, in the hotel lobby that night after the second game. And I said, look, I just have a feeling tomorrow's going to be the day. And I said, if you guys can just stay one more day, you know, I tried to help out with flights as much. I tried to help out as much as I could to make that happen because I just had an inner feeling in me and my gut saying that uh, tomorrow was going to be the day that I make my debut. And so that everybody stayed, and uh, the as the game went on, um, my family started to make their way down to the bullpen because we had no idea if I was going to get it or not. Um, this game started getting to later innings. And so they made their way down to the bullpen, and they said, you know, hey, if we're not going to watch your debut, we just at least want to see you in the bullpen um, before we take off. So uh, they were down there, and then the phone rang, and, and my name got called, so I – you know, ripped off my sweatshirt and started warming up and had to do it fairly quickly. And it was pretty cool. Like my family said, they, they all went running back to their seats. My mom just stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my mom stayed there and watched me warm up in the bullpen and then watched me run out to the field from the third base side. That's where she ended up making it to by the time uh, that I was going into the game. And, uh, but when I hit the dirt, I heard my walkout song that I've heard from 2017, 18, and 19. Um, I heard it come on. And to hear that at the big league level, well, I'll take it back even further. Hearing uh, Donnie's walkout song, Kalu's walkout song, and Dunn's walkout songs that I've heard all year, to hear it in Seattle gave me goosebumps. And I was like, you know, that's sweet. You know, starting pitcher, a couple of position players, like, yeah, they're going to have to walk out. So I was like, me, I'm, I'm probably just going to get an advertisement on the board or something like that when I run out. I wasn't expecting a walkout for me. Uh, but when I ran out and hit the dirt, or I heard my walkout song come on. And as I hit the grass, I started to get a little teary eyed. And as I was running, you know, I kept my head down, but I could see in my peripherals that they filmed me running in. And, you know, I saw on, on some of my family Snapchats that it said making major league debut. And I heard my walkout song and that gave me goosebumps. And, you know, just really emotional to think about all the stuff that I've overcome to get to the big leagues. And my walkout song was there when I was pitching well and when I was injured. And so, like I said, all those uh, adversities that I've overcome and challenges that I was put through to hear my walkout song come out during that moment and not highlight my career 
was very, very special. You mentioned your mom was sitting there watching you warm up. That That's an incredibly unique aspect of this story, especially you know, in Seattle. You have the opportunity to kind of watch guys warm up, and it's pretty close mm-hmm. to the fans. To have your mom over your shoulder like that after everything she's been through with you, did that help calm the nerves a little bit? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if maybe she was more nervous about it or me, but because, uh, you know, I, I guess I didn't really think about it that at that time. Um, because, you know, I still got to go get guys out. <laughs> Mom's not going to be on the mound for you helping you out. That's for sure. You got to figure it out on your own. But uh, it, it was, I think it was special for me knowing that she's been there and supported me. And also uh, my family and my fiance as well, too. They've done a really good job of supporting me. And I've been able to lean on them. And they've been pushing me and encouraging me through all the adversities as well. So that was pretty special. Um, I think the joy comes from like, I take joy in that. Uh, my mom gets to say, you know, her son's a major league baseball player. And I feel very proud that my mom gets to say that. So I feel like, you know, I, I, uh, succeeded in some aspect for her. So, you know, I find joy in that. You know, one of the other guys that got to the big leagues that was from the 2017 team is Pete Woodworth. Now he hasn't had a chance to make his debut yet in the big leagues, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, how exciting is it to watch a guy like that who you've been in the trenches with to get to the get that big league call from a coaching perspective? It's awesome. So the first time I met Woody was in 2016. He, I just started my last game in mm-hmm. Clinton, and I, we were actually up in, uh, I believe we were in uh, Appleton, Wisconsin, against the Timber Rattlers. Yep, the and Bruins Woody just come in. Yep, and uh, that was the only game that he was my coach there in 2016. And then so we went jump into 17 and had him all year. And then uh, jumped into 2019 and had him all year. Very special for him to move up with us as well. It's really cool. Like I think he, I think he uh, obviously enjoyed seeing his his guys get to the big leagues. But for us, it's a different perspective, you know, for the coach to come with you. I think, you know, obviously that doesn't happen very often. And so, like I said, there's a lot of special things that that are going on in the Mariners organization right now that I think will, like I said, pay dividends here in the future very very soon that's being one of them to have your your pitching coach come up with the set of guys that he's coached um i think is tremendous and it's it's very exciting to see um for woody you know he's a hard worker a lot of like you know you step in behind the lines or you say behind the scenes and woody's always out there from the starters you know in 2019 we had a starting group that would go out first and then the relievers come out and Woody's out there early for the starters, and he's out there for the last reliever, whoever wants to work in. And then he goes in, you know, he gets ready for the game, and he's right back out there early with the starter before the game. So the amount of work that Woody puts in for his staff, you know, I think that helps guys want to pitch that, that much more for him. And uh, there's a relationship there that that's pretty special, and, it, and it's not easy to come by. All right, well, let's go back to 2016. Uh, you had been in Clinton, but then uh, you got called up to Bakersfield. And I do feel a slight sense of responsibility to keep the memory of Bakersfield alive since the Mariners have come from there <laughs> to Modesto. You know, look, the facilities there are obviously not great, but, you know, the people that were working there, their broadcaster, Dan Vespris, the, the, the front office they had there, they were working their tails off to keep that thing alive for as long as they could. What do you remember about Bakersfield in 2016? Oh, let's see. I remember the, uh, the sunset. <laughs> You'd have to wait till 7.30 start time for the uh, the sun go down because the way that they built the field, it would, the sun would set right behind the hitter's eye. So in Bakersfield, they built this monster hitter's eye to try to block the sun as much as possible. That's probably the number one thing that I remember. Um, there's an interesting uh, point in my short stint with the Blaze was uh, there was a game we had to – we had to stop our game because there was fireworks after the game. And so it was like the seventh or eighth inning. We had to pause the game because of um, a curfew. And, like, you know, you can't have fireworks going off at X amount of time at night. So we had to light the fireworks off in the middle of the game and then resume the game after that. Um, very fitting for the Blaze. Uh, it was hot there. It was uh, – it was uh, let's see. There was a <laughs> – Bakersfield Blaze and his experience in itself. I'll just say that I won't give too much detail, but uh, but what I remember about the Blaze, what I would say, is I'm gonna stick to the sunset. That's for sure. <laughs> so you get to 2017, 
You're starting to develop your reliever, uh, reliever role with the Nuts. You know, where, where were you mentally going into that 2017 season? You're changing things up. You're trying to figure it all out in Pro Bowl. So where was your head going into that 2017 season? Well, I was excited, you know, accepting a new challenge. Um, the idea of getting moved to the bullpen and having my stuff play up and, and uh, get better is, is obviously exciting and appealing, um, especially a guy like me, my personality. You know, when I take the mound, I like to, to throw the ball 100%. And the idea of my stuff ticking up coming out of the bullpen is, is exciting for me and intriguing. So I was very optimistic with that and open to becoming a full-time reliever. And Woody did a really good job of grooming me and developing me and, and uh, challenging me in different aspects on the mound. And so, you know, in practice, I'm working on different things before the game, um, flat ground and stuff like that, trying to get better mechanics, trying to learn how to hold runners better as a reliever. And that was a big obstacle for me to overcome in 2017. Um, but, yeah, I was very optimistic and open to the idea of becoming a, a full-time reliever in 2017. and and uh, I certainly learned a lot that year. Well, before we get into that postseason run, what do you remember about the regular season? What are some of the memories that stick out from that 2017 regular season? Uh, you know, it seems like a blur because every day we were showing up, we were having fun. You know, you, you go back to that chemistry that we had. It was just there every day. Uh, great group of guys. Made you excited to go to the field. And uh, we were winning a lot of ball games. We were a really talented group. And so that made it fun, and that made the year go quick when you're winning. Um, like I said, it, it seems like a blur. Uh, some some moments I remember um, losing a lot of money at Lake Elsinore opening weekend, gambling at the casino, uh, having to go to uh, San Jose and commute, you know, wondering why we're not just staying the night. <laughs> Cause Something the we got to do after you guys left. Yes, exactly. So, uh, but no, we, we had a lot of good times. Um, I can't tell you how many times we ate Mr. Pickles. Yeah, you know, <laughs> when you walk into the clubhouse and there's a handful of guys that had Mr. Pickles. Um, had a really good time with uh, Curletta. Joey Curletta just got uh, traded over into the organization, so it was fun meeting guys like him moving in. Um, Pablo Lopez when he got traded, Lucas Raldi, Nider, and Duggar. You know that was a midseason crisis for us. You know we were wondering what the heck's going on. You know. Four of our really good friends just got traded. Uh, so that was a challenge. We got to meet, you know, the creature. Jack Anderson came up and joined the group in 2017. Um, so that was pretty cool. It's very special. Eric Folia started to make his name for himself as the greatest hitter ever. <laughs> so there's a lot of great memories in that, uh, that regular season run. Yeah, Pablo Lopez and Robert Duggar making their big league debuts with the Marlins uh, on that side. And Nick Neidert still putting up some good numbers there. Uh, Getting into the postseason run. I mean, you were a part of that bullpen. It's a 6 no run to the title that year. What do you remember about the postseason run? It was cool. Uh, as a bullpen, we uh, really came together. You know, we rallied behind uh, like Best that had an unbelievable year. Rallied behind him. Um, he was a great leader for us in the bullpen. Um, the relationship that we built, I think, you know, a lot of the chemistry on teams can come from a bullpen. You know, how close-knit a group of relievers can get spreads to the team in a positive way. And so, you know, we carried that into the playoffs. And, you know, Jordan Cowan's a, a rat. We call him the baseball rat. You know, a guy like that is really easy to root for. So you rally behind him. He uh, can fuel a team. He can spark a team. Donnie's the same way. Um, we had a lot, of, a lot of great guys on the team. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say the playoffs were easy, but – when you have that much chemistry in a team and then when you get hot at the right time, you know, that's a recipe for success. And we had both of those. Um, we played some really good teams, beat some really good teams. So uh, it was a special year and, and very, very uh, fitting end to the story, you know, especially with you making the call. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> the final call. <laughs> Warren comes set. The pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three, and it's over. A perfect title for Nuts Nation as they defeat the Jethawks 8-1 to one in game three. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, I think, you know, for me, my role to get the final out, the way I saw it was I was uh, 
I was so excited and, and jacked up on the mound because I had the opportunity to seal a ring for all of my teammates, you know, and all the fans and, and all the workers that work for the Modesto Nuts, the whole organization, everybody. Myself right. included? That's right. For the Mariners organization, you know, I had a chance to, to seal it. And so, you know, all of that was – I felt the weight of all of that. And not in a bad way, but in a really good way. And it fueled me. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of uh, joy coming in and, and getting the final three outs of that and, you know, locking in a ring for my teammates. That was probably the most special part for me is, is having the privilege to secure a ring for all their hard work, for everybody's hard work the whole year coming to an end and winning a championship ring to be the guy to, to be able to, to lock that in. It's pretty special. Oh man, really appreciate the time. It's been a ton of fun uh, catching up. Anything else you want to add before we say our final goodbye here? <laughs> Stay safe, man. Yeah, Stay absolutely. That virus. Yeah, for real. So <laughs> I appreciate you spending some time again. Yeah, stay safe. Best wishes to you, your family, your fiance, and everybody. And we'll get baseball back. We don't know when, but it'll be back. Awesome. John Thurman Field is the place for fun.